Well, here we go on another Cape Ann Photo Tours adventure. Today I'm going to be shooting with the Fuji 100 to 400, and uh, I've got some shots from it already, but I thought I'd go out and do some more testing this afternoon. So here we go. So I thought on our way over to Gloucester, we would talk about this 100 to 400 a little bit. And I'm comparing it to the, uh, the Canon 100 to 400 and the Sony 100 to 400, because they're all very similar. Uh, the first thing is the weight. They're all about, you know, 3.5 pounds, somewhere in that range. So they weigh about the same. The, uh, the way the zoom works is the, exactly the same. They zoom out, it's not an internal zoom. So, uh, and they both, all, all three of them uh, extend out about 3.75 inches, somewhere in that range. Um, they all have uh, the same amount of switches. So you have a focus limiter switch, you have an OIS on and off switch. And uh, let's see, there's a third one in here. I don't know, I can't remember where it is. I'm, uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you an example. Um, but the cool thing is, is that all these on an APS-C camera produce the same result as far as focal length goes in 35 millimeter terms. You have, uh, they go from about 150 to 600 in 35 millimeter terms. So they're all very similar with one big caveat. The Sony G Master lens is very expensive. It is 25 almost $2,600, somewhere in that range. The Fuji and the Canon are both around uh, $1,700 to $1,900, which is still very expensive. These lenses are lenses that are used for wildlife, uh, landscape stuff, sports, and so they're, they're pretty specialized. And you have to use them either on a tripod or a monopod and in some cases, uh, I know I can use mine with the OIS on, and I'm sure the Canon, the Canon and the Sony both work about the same. Uh, so the three lenses are very similar, and they produce the same results. They're really great results with all three lenses. But I'm gonna be using my, my Fuji because that's the gear I have. Uh, and we're gonna, I'm going over to Gloucester now to uh, shoot some stuff with the OIS on, the OIS off, on the tripod, off the tripod, shoot it the, uh, all the way out at 400, and also all the way in, well, not maybe not all the way in, I'd probably at, I'll probably shoot at 200, 300, and 400, something like that. And by the way, they're all um, variable aperture lenses as well, which are 4.5 to 5.6. So very similar lenses, and I think they're going to be, I, I think the Fuji, I, I mean, I, when, I had, when I was a Canon guy, I really want lusted after that 100 to 400, but I never did buy it. Um, so I'm glad that I have this one and I bought mine used. You might want to look at it, buying it used. I got it for $950 from a friend of mine. And if you keep looking and are diligent about it, you should also be able to find um, this lens somewhere around $1,000 which is, if you think about it, is a huge difference compared to $1,800, $1,900, somewhere in that range. So anyway, we're on our way to Gloucester and we'll see you in just a bit. Okay, what I've got lined up here is the old Gloucester paint factory. And we're gonna shoot at a number of different um, focal lengths and f-stops on the tripod. Then I'm gonna shoot some handheld. And I've also got some shots that I got before that are the same thing. We had a fishing boat go by, then we had somebody go by in a, in a, a rowing dory. So I'll show you those images as well. It's, it's pretty straightforward. We're just trying to check for sharpness on and off the tripod and at different f-stops and at different um, focal lengths. Okay, now we're gonna try some at uh, 200th of a second at f8. at 160 again. Of course, this is on a tripod, so you could you would expect that it would be nice and sharp, which it is. It's uh, nice and sharp. Now we're gonna zoom out to 400. Try the same thing. This is at 200 at F8 at 160. 
Yes, again here we're on a tripod again, so it makes a heck of a difference trying to keep everything sharp, which it is all the way out at 400. Okay, so now we're really going to test out this lens. We're going to put the tele extender on here and we're going to shoot with uh, a slower shutter speed and see what happens. <laughs> Can't wait to see. We're going to try this at 400 millimeters or 800 equivalent. 35, we've got the tele extender on here. Shoot a one hundredth of a second at f8. <laughs> it actually looks pretty sharp. <laughs> that, that's that's amazing to me. Now, if I back out to three hundred. Pretty nice. 200. These two shots here were done at very low shutter speeds at one hundredth of a second. And with the 1.4x extender attached, I was pretty amazed at how sharp they actually are with the OIS on. Pretty amazing results. This last shot was done all the way out at 400 without the 1.4 extender on but it was shot at a 50th of a second at f11. Pretty amazing. Then as I was finishing up my testing of shooting with the 100 to 400, some fishing boats came in and out and dropped their catch off and went back to their berths. And I got some good shots at different focal lengths and I think they're quite interesting. Uh, nice and sharp, which is great. Then of course this guy came across in front of me in his dory with the uh, mast and sail attached, which was great. And I did the same thing with him, took one a little bit further off, uh, you know, around 200. And then the next one, a little bit tighter in with the 400. And it worked out quite well, I think. Now, these next images are images that were taken over in the back shore of Gloucester, over on Atlantic Road, uh, when a storm came through last weekend, I think it was. And I converted these over to black and white because... Black and white images seem to have more tone to them when we're dealing with, you know, a great side light, which was at sunset or approaching sunset, I should say. Yeah, and I really like the way these came out. The, uh, the black and white conversion really makes them look a lot more dramatic. The other thing that's pretty incredible about this lens is the twin linear motors for the autofocus. The autofocus is very fast and also pretty silent as well. So I was amazed at how well this lens performed as far as its autofocus goes. Then of course, uh, these next shots are from the supermoon over at uh, Straitsmith Island, which I uh, did a video on last week. And the 100 to 400 was really the perfect lens for that particular job. It, uh, it was amazing, you know, at, at 600 all the way out, or I should say 400, but a 600 at 35 millimeter equivalent worked quite well for this situation. That's it from the Gloucester waterfront. If you like this video and you like what I do, and uh, if you like supporting me, it would be wonderful that you would subscribe to this channel and hit notifications so you know when uh, new videos are coming out. They usually come out on Wednesday. And if you wouldn't mind, please check out uh, kpanphototours.com because I've got some great workshops coming up in the spring, and I'm always looking for people to sign up. Where I, our, we can take signups right now for uh, May through October. I'm leaving the month of October open so that we can really take advantage of that beautiful light over on Cape Ann. Uh, in October. So that's it for this week and we'll talk to you next time.